good evening, friends. Let's pray. Mm. Holy Spirit, have your way. Open our ears. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. Let our soul and our body take a break and let our spirits be ignited right now, God. Speak, your servants are listening, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I leave for London tomorrow. Um, it's a, an interesting story because I've been saved since 89. <clears throat> Someone else do the math for me. I've forgotten how long that is. Huh? 20 how many? 26, 26 years. That's cool. Um, in 88 and 89 and 90, I went to England and Scotland with a theater troupe from Pepperdine that I was part of. And one year I was a dancer, and one year I was the lighting designer, and one year I was the stage manager. And I fell so in love with the UK. And it's something that's very interesting because it's been in my heart since I was a wee one just anything British, any movies, any books, any history, and I would just, I would devour it, and I would devour it, and, and so when I got to go and put my feet on that land, the first two years, I wasn't a believer. The first year, I wasn't a believer, and, but it was something that just spoke so deeply to me. I was like, wow, I love it here, and you know, it's wet and damp, and this hair doesn't do damp because it, it grows. Its glory magnifies in the presence of dampness. And so my vanity is such that, um, you know, damp climates are not my first choice, and I don't like being cold. I, I am a layers girl. See, these little things, these little digits called toes, you will only see them June, July, and August. After that, they go away because I will freeze if my toes are exposed. I, you know, I've got no blood, my mom would say, and I'm always cold, but I got on this land, and there was just something that just in me would resonate. The following year, no, I came back right before I got saved. And again, it was just like, oh, I want to be here, I want to be here. The third year I came back and I was a believer, and I'm like, okay, I'm not leaving this time. How do I apply for a work visa? How do I, how do I remain? There's something speaking to me here. And <clears throat> the Lord went, mm -mm, go home. I'm like, no, I don't want to go home. I like it here a lot. I don't know why, but it just, the people... The, the atmosphere, there was just something so deep within me. But the Lord said, go home. And I went home, and now I'm married and I have kids. So I'm glad I came home. Um, but I remember walking across the whatever. It's not a gangplank. It's whatever that thing is to get on the plane. And I, I always touch my plane. I'm like, okay, I need lots of angels on this plane before I get in, <laughs> before I walk in this door. I want a whole legion of angels holding this plane up all the way home. And I always I touch the plane. And, but I touched the plane and I just went, I'll be back. And it was more an act of faith than a word of knowledge. Um, so then I come here to Jubilee and Rod and Julie come and the minute they came, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I know, you know, and, and Rod's really funny, and he's, he's a great jokester, and you can only believe half of what he says unless he's sitting right here, and, um, and he was really fun, and Julie, I just, you know, I went, and I touched her, and I'm like, oh, English people don't do touch. Okay, sorry. <laughs> 
But I just, I'm like, I've got to feel it. I've got, I've got mm, something. I want to go. But I've learned to wait on the Lord. I've learned to not push. I've learned to present my requests before the Lord and trust him to direct my path. And, and so I, I, I just put it there, and I remember coming up to Becky and going, I'm going to London! This was like four years ago, and she just looked at me like, okay. Um, and it just wasn't time, and it wasn't time, and it wasn't time. Then last year, we started talking. The Lord began to percolate the sound of liberty last two years and put it on pastor's heart about liberty teams going forth, liberty teams going forth, about Leviticus 25, about them coming and releasing the sound of liberty, that it's a sound, and restoring people to their inheritance. And, and so we began to gather, and we began to gather people to meet and to pray, what is, what is it to be a liberty team? And we knew it wasn't same old, same old. And it's not to discount the way we've gone out to the nations in the past, but God had given a specific word. And so we realized we've got to come and we've got to sit and we've got to wait on him for this word and for him to unpack this word. In Acts, when Jesus told them to go and wait, and they were all in the upper room waiting, they had no clue what they were waiting for. They, had, they just didn't know where to go next. And rather than go out and make something happen, they sat, they tarried, partly out of fear. If we walk outside this door, we might die too. But we've got to pull together and we've got, we've got to wait. That's the last thing he said. He said, wait, we've got to wait. And so they waited together. And in that waiting, the spirit began to blow. So we waited, and it was hard because we all had great ideas of what a Liberty team should look like. Well, we could go do this. We could go do this. I have done this before. This worked before. We, how about this idea? And it was like, that's all great ideas. And it wasn't that it wasn't the Lord. It wasn't time. The wind hadn't blown yet. So we waited together six, nine months maybe, and then we said, okay, we're done. The Lord said, you're done. Nothing happened. We were just done waiting. And he said, good, all right, go back to all the other things I've called you to. And it's really easy to, to judge that moment with disappointment and go, well, we waited, we thought we heard but Lord, you didn't move. And, but rather we all just went, okay. We did what he asked us to do. Now let's go back. Let's go back and do the next thing he's calling us to do, the next thing he's calling us to do. And then Rod and Julie came and, and they spoke with Steve and, and it began to stir and suddenly the wind began to blow. And the idea of the highway of holiness. Well, first we did our Isaiah 35, our Highway 35 conference. And the Lord began to talk about the highway of holiness that the righteous shall walk upon and no evil shall dwell there. And, and again, the wind began to pick up and the wind began to stir. And then Rod and Julie came and then they talked and they connected. And, and it was something that was on their hearts and something that they'd shared of sharing the wealth of what God has given us of carrying what Jubilee has and making a deposit in their land and of them carrying what Commonwealth Church has and what the Prayer Foundation carries and making a deposit here in Jubilee and in Camarillo. So they began to visit that and I'm like, London, London, <laughs> we're going? And so we began to talk about a Liberty team and what that looks like. And what has formed as a result of this is that we have a team of 15 of us going. And we are going to the Chosen 
prayer camp that they'll be having there in Mellis, England, that Rod and Julie are hosting. And Pastor will be a speaker. He was last year, and he will be again this year. And Graham Cook is going to also speak. And, but we are bringing a team to come alongside their team and minister with them in their prayer and ministry tent. And that is our, our first reason to come. Our first reason is to come alongside and to come under, is to provide support. They're so excited. They're like, yes, come, come. We're expecting 200 people. We're going to need the ministers. And so it's been very exciting. And our team has been praying, and their team has been praying. We've been praying together. And then just recently, um, Graham Cook has a prayer network, and they assign different groups in different locations to gather intel before he speaks anywhere. And so a group will be assigned to just wait on the Lord and hear what it is there to pray for, what it is there to break, what it is there to release. We actually have the same thing. Becky and her intercessory team does this all the time. They pray it on Saturday. They're going to be praying the next two Saturdays. They're praying, are you burning? So we've got this strong prayer network here. Don't miss it. There's so many great opportunities to dive in through prayer. So the prayer intel from Graham's church got released, and we were able to, to share that amongst all of us. And what's really funny is my sister was the director of the team that gathered the intel for this, which is just kind of funny how God just keeps circulating and, and circling. And so we're praying, and we're prepping, and we're ready to go. And what has been on my heart a lot in this last week to pray for is Jubilee. Because what I believe the Lord is wanting to release through these Liberty teams is that, okay, these individuals may be going, but I am taking what you carry. I am taking what you carry. I am taking what you have fought to release in this place. That is my inheritance. That is my freedom. That is my gift, my wealth that God has bestowed upon me to now give away as I go. And as I go, as this team of 15 of us goes, the connection here doesn't stop. And everything we're getting there, I am praying that it shows up here before we get home. Amen. I'm praying that when we come back, Everything we will have touched and encountered and released and picked up and received is already in operation here. So it is so important that we are receiving, that we are receiving even if we don't go, and that we're giving. A couple of weeks ago, I started speaking about identity. Identity is kind of, that's, that's my banner word. And the one thing I didn't get to explain is really funny. I was listening to Ray Hughes yesterday, and he just wrote a book called The 107 Things That I Didn't Get to Say Last Time I Talked to You. <laughs> and, and the most important key that I can bring to you about identity is when you know who you are, you stop worrying about it. And that's the most important reason for us to know that we're loved. The most important reason for us to know that our Father delights in us, that it is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom, that he gave us everything through his Son, that when I know I'm loved, and when I really know I'm loved, then when the enemy begins to lie, I stop listening. I stop listening. Because it's a waste of my time to worry about me. It's a waste of the Father's time. Now, this does not mean that he is not concerned with your needs. This does not mean that he is not intimately there comforting you when you mourn and rejoicing when you rejoice and with you in your struggle. What it means is that I, like Jesus, am to be about my father's business. And if I am concerned about me, then I am not concerned about him. It has distracted me. One of our team members, her knee went out, full on attack, and she was walking around with the cane, and, 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 and automatically the fear rises up because you're like, 
oh no, what if I can't go? I'm going to have to stand, I'm going to have to walk. What if I can't go now? And the fear begins to rise. And I just looked at her and I went, I don't care about your leg. Your leg's a non-issue. What are you supposed to be praying for, for the team and for London? And she just looked at me and I winked at her. And, and she began to laugh. I said, knee's a non-issue for God. Yes, we can pray for your knee. Yes, he's concerned about your knee. But we know that's an attack. We are not going to give this the attention right now. Amen. It is trying to draw your focus and pull you off the wall. And so we just prayed about everything else. Well, her knee got healed. And it's so important that we carry the wealth that is in us, which is that I am saved, I am redeemed, I am loved, I am perfect, which means complete in Christ. I am complete in Christ. And there's a world out there that needs to know and encounter and understand what it is to be complete. And if I am concerned of where I am not measuring up, then I am being distracted and I am being lied to and I am not believing the truth about me, which is easy to do. Let me not fault a single one of you. Woo! He's there. I hear him. I, I stumble. I get it. I had a few worship leaders over yesterday, and we were talking about um, how important it is to remind ourselves that when we come in to worship corporately, we are to come to bring our offerings to the Father. In this generation, a shift that has happened is that worship is solely a place of encounter, and that's awesome. It's powerful, and it's something he's doing in this generation. It's something he's pulling out of this generation, which is really important for us to lay hold of. But once we lay hold of what he's doing, it's so important to go back and bring in then what we've known until now. And I want to encourage us again as we come into worship to come not to receive first, but to come to bring to come to bring our offering of praise, our sacrifice. Sometimes it's a major sacrifice. I do not feel like worshiping you. I'm wondering where you are. Why have you not shown up here? Why has this not changed? Why is this so painful for my loved one right now? And I'm not in a place of wanting to give. I'm asking and I'm pulling. But I want to go to Psalm 31, please. Kim. Wee, wee, wee. Um, let's start with verse 9. It's one of David's psalms, the Lord, a fortress in adversity. He says, have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. I am a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And I'm repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. Ooh, that's awful. I am forgotten like a dead man. Out of mind, I am like a broken vessel. For I hear the slander of many. And there's only one we need to hear slander from, and it's enough to take us out. Fear is on every side, and while they take counsel together against me, they scheme to take away my life. But this is why I love David. As for me, I trust in you, O oh God. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Do not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. 
Oh, how great is your goodness. Say that with me. Oh, how great is your goodness. Say it again. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. You see where he came from? I am despised. I am ashamed. They are running from me. They are slandering me. I am useless. Guess what? David let it out. There is no shame in letting it out. But he let it out before the Lord. And then, yeah, but I will trust. Oh, my soul, hope thou in God. I love, he, you know, he's like, their lying lips better be put to silence. Don't let me be put to shame. And he just stops and he goes, oh, how great is your goodness. He says, I'm going to shift where I am. And I'm now going to preach truth. I've let out my circumstances, and now I'm going to prophesy over myself. I'm going to prophesy over my circumstances, and I'm going to release the word of God and the truth of who he is, who he never changes, who he never ceases to be. And he awakens his soul. See, the battle's in the soul. That's why we sang today, my soul sings how I love you. We are feeling emotive people. We feel a lot, some of us more than others. But we all feel, and our soul is what needs the refreshing, as God told David in Psalm 23. Restore my soul, renew my mind. All of this is the workings of my soul. So I've got to... Bless the Lord, O my soul. I've got to encourage myself in the Lord, and then I need to go and I need to grab somebody and say, help me get off the ground here. (laughs) If I can't get there myself, that's why we're in this body. You know, we have this vertical relationship with the Father that is us alone. And that's that place of worship. That's that place of encounter that we come into. But this is what he has given us on the earth, is one another, is the body, is the fellowship. And it's, um, it's easy to get alone for two reasons. One, nobody sees your stuff. And two, you don't have to see theirs. But God does stuff. And he gave us each other, and he said, okay, now go get messy together and find me in the midst of it, and then give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. And so we are going to London to release liberty, but I don't have to go to London to release liberty. I can release liberty every day. When I watch my kids struggling after I get out of mom mode and why aren't you doing this and why aren't we doing Oh, wait, okay, stop. What are you doing, Lord? What are you saying? What do you want to say? What are you releasing? Come here, let's pray. Come here, let's find Christ here because he has much for you in the midst of this frustration, in the midst of this moment, in the midst of what you're not understanding, in the midst of us clashing right now. Jesus has a gift for you right here, right now. And I can stop and pull back and, but you are great, oh God, and I can pull and I can call and I can suddenly, I can release my child into liberty. I can release myself into liberty. 
And so as we go out now as Liberty teams, it doesn't, it's, it's something that we are exploring and something that we are uncovering. But I want you guys to understand that you are the Liberty team. Jubilee is the tree. London, Israel, Germany, the Ukraine, these are the branches that branch off this Liberty team. And I want to invite and I want to exhort all of you to understand you are seen by the Father. You are seen and you are loved and he does not see the spot. He does not see the blemish. He does not see the flaw. He sees Christ. And he sees you and he loves you and he knows you on purpose. And he wants you to see him, see into his heart that says, I am not standing here in the judgment that's coming against you. I am standing here in full acceptance and love. Would you come into this? And then let's go give stuff away. It's like being Santa's friend. If any of you saw Elf, I want to be buddy. I want to sit in the sleigh, and I want to be the one handing out the gifts out the back of the sleigh. And that's who we get to be. That's who you are. You are rich beyond measure. You carry so much. That is your identity and that alone. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. I love giving stuff away. I do. Ask my husband, how much do you want to give? Let's double it. He's like, "Uh uh-huh, okay. Good man. All right, Luke chapter 12, verse 22. All right. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you eat, about the body, what you're going to put on. Life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, which, neither, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? You can ask that again. How much more valuable are you than the birds? Which of you? See, the birds aren't created in his image. They're precious. They're his creation. He, he loves them. One doesn't fall to the ground, but that he knows. But you're made in his image. He chose you to bear his image. And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature. I tell you, if I could, I would be 50 feet tall right now. Instead, I'd just buy high shoes. So, if you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, <clears throat> how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was not arrayed like one of these. So if then God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you of you of little faith? (sighs) Don't seek what you should eat or drink or have an anxious mind. Ooh, ain't that it right there? Try throwing a going away party, potluck, doing construction in your house, and packing to leave. You want to talk anxious? It has been so fun to go, I am bringing peace to London, therefore I must appropriate peace in the midst of this. I am bringing peace to London. Ha, ha, ha. Therefore I must appropriate peace and doing everything I can to keep pulling myself back in this week. I'm just pulling myself back in and just pulling myself back in and pulling myself back in and going, okay, this is where you are, and you don't move from this place. Um, I was talking with Veda and Liz <clears throat> the other night, because, <clears throat> excuse me, my friend Liz is leaving. She and Joey are moving to Colorado, and we're so excited for their next chapter, but we're grieving because the other Puerto Rican is leaving. I'm like, hey, you're going to leave me alone up here? That's all right. I got enough hair for both of us. So, 
and, and we were talking about, in my family, I have four sisters, um, you know, everyone's like, well, did you marry Puerto Ricans? And they're like, mm-mm. It's, you can only have one person on fire in the house. And so, so our, our, our marriages are kind of like this. This is me. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Sit, okay? That's kind of how we roll. <laughs> because it's just, it's in us. It's in our culture. It's in the Catholicness that we've grown up that if you don't worry, you don't care. What do you mean you're not worried? Don't you care? Of course I care. But I'm resting in peace with him because he's got it. And they're like, mm, you don't care. You know, and, and because it's a cultural thing that, that worry is how we show that we care. But when we're walking with Christ, we can't do that anymore. It's illegal. It's illegal to be anxious. My job is to be rooted and grounded in him, in his word, and his word is peace. Always. His word is always shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It's always complete. And... And if I'm going to give that away, then I have to practice appropriating it daily, sometimes every 10 minutes. It just depends on the circumstances. But this is a work, saints. It is the work of the Lord to, in this fleshly vessel, remain in the Spirit. That is my work here. My work is to find him, to appropriate that place, to be filled with love and to give it away. That is my work on this planet. I have no other work. Everything in my life is an offshoot, is an off branch of that work. And so the bottom line is my job is to be loved and then to love. And in doing that, I bring liberty. Liberty. That is where liberty is released. When I can say, you are seen, and you are loved, and you are valued. You are highly valued. I see you. Not according to just your personality and this and the other, but I've asked the Father, and he's shown me his great love for you. His heart leaps when he gazes on you. His smile goes past his ears it's like a Cheshire cat. And there is where I can now come and bring you into restoration. When I know that I am seen, but I am loved, not judged, not measured, but I am seen as he sees, where I have, I, I have taken the time to go, Lord, I'm stepping out today. Ooh, let me... Fill up with love. Let me back in to you again. Let me back in. I always back in. I back in. I wrap my husband around me this way. He's like, hug me this way. I'm like, no, come hug me this way. I love to be covered. There's safety here. There's protection here. My back is gotten. And that's what the Father does. He goes before me, but he's got my back, and he, he surrounds me. He enfolds me, and he draws me in, and he covers me. So when I'm, when I'm having this match with the liar, I have, to st- I have to back in. I have to just back in. I'm like, where are you? Where are you? There, 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 there. There you are. Enfold me. Enfold me. Enfold me. Now you look at him, because I'm on. I'm here. I'm his. I'm in him. You talk to him. I'm not listening anymore. And then, oh, okay. Now it's time to go give it away. Go give it away. Go give it away. They're hungry. They're yearning. The believers, the non-believers, all. God loves the whole world. It is ours to go give life and liberty away. So we're leaving. I'm, I'm getting ready to step into my destiny in London. I don't know what that means. I have a little bit of a clue, but I don't know. 
and I've got a lot of words about it. I'm like, awesome. And so I'll take my words and I'll pray them before the Father. I'm like, here, you said this, you said that, and this was fantastic. Look what you said. I haven't seen that. Well, that happened. Yes, celebrate. woo And that's the issue with prophets. Prophets forget to celebrate because you're already over there. And by the time you get over here, you're already over there. In the prophetic, you're always forward thinking, and this is a forward thinking house, so it's really critical that we stop and celebrate the answered prayers. That, you know, ask him to remind you, Lord, re- refresh me. What, did, what have you answered that I have forgotten? Because I'm already on to the next thing. Because if we don't stop and celebrate, we will live disquieted and we will live dissatisfied. But he satisfies my soul with his fatness and his marrow, and he wants me to enjoy his goodness. So it's really important as a prophetic culture that we keep asking, remind me what I need to celebrate. Remind me what I've forgotten so that I will, that I will have a party right here and say, yes, you answered this prayer. We prayed, and oh my gosh, I totally didn't think it would go this way, and it went that way, and yes, I celebrate you for your goodness so that you take that. Remember Jesus said, remember, remember, remember. That's why we do communion. Remember, remember, remember. The phylacteries, remember. Because you take that with you to your next thing. And if you are remembering loss and you are remembering his absence, then that is what you're going to give away. But if you're remembering his goodness and the answers of his prayer, then that is what you then bring. Then that is what you then release. And, and those things that you haven't seen answered yet, sacrifice of praise. I, I, will, I will put that here, and I will stand on it, and I will worship over it. And I will give you all the glory over this thing. I expected it this way. I have not seen it this way. It does not mean you are not moving still. Because he's got that time thing. He doesn't wear a watch. He doesn't care. Ah, oh, Frustrating. You know, the one day, a thousand years, all that jazz. No, it doesn't work for me here on the planet. My flesh wants it now. He didn't care. He's like, I'm working. I got it. I got it. I'm at peace. I'm at rest. Come sit here. Come back in. Come be enfolded. All right, in three minutes. Kim, do we have those pictures? My family just went on a road trip, and we drove to Colorado. We took two weeks. We camped on the way there. We camp on the way back. We never plan exactly where we're going to camp. We look at a map. My husband goes, this looks like the longest road. Let's go there. And, and we love to go off the beaten path and, because you begin to see things that you would never see otherwise. Freeways are fantastic. When they work, they are amazing, okay? Three in the morning on a Sunday? I can get from here to Burbank in half an hour. Shh, don't tell. Okay, but, but if I never get off my standard road of travel, I'm going to miss the beauty that God's laid up for me. So we went to, this is one of the places that we pulled up to in the middle of the night around 10 o'clock at night in the dark because we just have a map and it's got little tents on it and it shows you where you can camp. So we were like, oh, there's a dirt road. Let's go there. So when we woke up, this is what we saw. If you see that little dark shadow, that's um, what they call a slot canyon. So next picture. So you start going in, and it looks like that, and it, and it goes back a bit. And it only goes so far, and then you've got to go up. Next picture. Here's my up. This is my son, Sam. Sam can climb anything. Sam can climb a 30-foot rope without his feet. And he's, he's just, he's a monkey. And he's always been that way. He could climb before he could walk. So what we did is we said, okay, Sam, tie this rope around you and go up. So he did. Next picture. And then he pulled up Rachel. And the next picture. And he pulled up Joe. And then he pulled up Ryan. And he pulled me up too. Let's go back to Sam. You see, I don't have the agility. I don't have the upper body strength to get where he got. But because he did, he provided a way for all of us to encounter 
a new place that I could not have gotten to on my own. None of us could have gotten there without Sam's agility and his strength to get up there and then run to the back of the cave and yank the rest of us up. This is why we do church. Thanks, Kim. You can bring the lights up, and I'm going to close here. I need you. I need you. I need you. You need me. God planned it that way. He established it that way. Because you have the agility and the strength and a rope to get somewhere I can't get without you. And God's desire is that we go. Is that we all go. There will be some places he doesn't call us to. You know, I wanted to go to Israel, and he's like, nope, not yet. Okay. But they're going, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to release everything I've got into that liberty team. Because it's their turn to go and to pull, and to pull others, and to pull others in. That's what we're doing. We're going to go to London, and we're going to pull people into their liberty. And I need you to lend your strength to that. I need you to lend what you carry, the richness of the word that's planted in you. I need you to release that, our direction, so that I can pull even more. You are going to be pulling with us, regardless of whether you are here or there. We are pulling together. Each of us has a rope around us for one thing or another in the kingdom. Sorry, one thing or another in the kingdom. And together, we pull one another up into those places that the Lord has given us. So would you stand with me? We're going to close and then we're going to pray for the nations. And I bless you and all of you online to join us for that service of praying for the nations. Come and pull. That's why we pray. Becky's got a rope around this entire church, man. Her and Betty and the intercessors. Holy cow. Ladies and gentlemen, we would not be where we are without that anchor. Don't miss it. Don't miss the blessing and the honor and the opportunity of tying a rope on and pulling people up with you, getting them to places they couldn't get to otherwise. And then honor, see, see beyond where we are and say, Lord, who can I honor today? Who can I come under and come alongside? Who, whose hand do I need to grab and, and bring along with me? Who do I need to come under and just breathe life into? How do I serve my brothers and sisters, God? How? How do I come under and lift up? It's not just about me and my thing and worship. How do, I, how do I honor the intercessors? How do I honor the cafe? How do I honor the lady at the grocery store? Get me out of here and get me here in the spirit. Let me back into you, Lord. So right now I want all of you to reach up in the spirit and I want you to receive your rope. I want you to ask the Father, Lord, what, what is my rope? What is the thing that I'm to use to pull others up? I want you to take that rope and I want you to tie it around you. Leave lots of slide and tie, tie a nice square knot so it doesn't come un, undone. And would you pray this with me, Father? I consecrate this rope to you. That it will not be a chain. It will not be a yoke of bondage. But it will be an instrument of deliverance. It will be an instrument of liberty. It will be an instrument of freedom. It will be an instrument of life. Now open my ears to hear what you are saying about this rope. And may this rope become one of my best friends. 
When it becomes too tight, show me where I'm eating too much of the lies of the enemy. And let me release it again and anchor my soul in you and pull all those up with me that you desire to bring up higher. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys. We're going to pray for the nations. Thank you.